Hello, my name is Dan Fessler. I'm a pixel artist and independent game developer currently working on a game called Chasm, which is a super awesome uh, Metroidvania uh, platformer and that was recently kickstarted. If you haven't seen it yet, you should check it out at chasmgame.com. Today I'd like to show you uh, a method that I've been developing while working on the project. I'm doing all the environment art and uh, a lot of times it calls for these really large illustrative pieces and if you've ever done pixel art before, uh, you'll know that it's a very tedious pro uh, process that, especially for large images, just really takes a lot of time. So I've made this method uh, in Photoshop that helps speed up uh, the process and, and makes my workflow uh, more efficient. Uh, I call the method HD Index Painting. Uh, it's an, ex an extension of traditional index painting, which is largely unknown. If you'd like to um, read more about that, I, I have also posted about that on my blog. And I'm not going to expose the magic to you yet, I just want to show you the things that you can do first. You can do things like smudging, which is really cool. You can do... Um, you can obviously do your uh, hard pixel brushes, but you can also do uh, a hard anti-alias brush where the anti-aliasing is procedurally laid out for you. You can do soft brushes and you can do opacity as well, so where the color is building up as you keep on going over it. Uh, so that's all really neat. You can, uh, as you notice here, you can do procedural dithering. As I'm laying down the soft brushes, you'll see the dither patterns form. You can, when you're color picking, let's switch to a hard brush, um, no, a pixel brush. When you're color picking, you not only are picking the, the color, but also the, the current dither pattern of that area. So I'm picking up that, do a solid blue, do a lighter blue, another dither pattern, and so forth, um, which is pretty neat. Uh, you can do gradients. Let's, let's say I wanted to make the, let's see, make the sky darker in a corner, like let's say over here, just have the clouds kind of fade off over there. Um, basically any dirty tool that you can think of in Photoshop, tools that normally would destroy the integrity of the piece, you can now utilize in your work, uh, which is super, super cool. Uh, so let's go over how to set up the canvas. Um, let's delete what we got here. I'm going to move over my layer palette um, so you can actually see what's going on. <clears throat> now the first thing that you want to do is just create a, a new layer called Paint. This is basically where all of your actual painting is going to going to happen. Uh, let's fill it in, just for the sake of demonstration, let's fill it in with, uh, with the gradient from black to white. Uh, let's do horizontal. Okay. Um, this is going to be a completely opaque layer. There's no transparency to it. If you do have transparency, make sure you don't. <laughs> it's very important. Um, now the first layer that we're going to lay down, it's going to sound pretty redundant, is a black and white adjustment layer. Um, the reason why we do this is because Photoshop does a little bit of black magic where it introduces small little tiny bits of hue to make a gradient uh, appear smoother. So it's not a real pure black and white gradient, even if you are using pure black and white. So we, the first thing that we do is, is convert it to black and white. And if you're not familiar with adjustment layers, they're super cool. What they uh, allow for is uh, adjustments to all the layers below it uh, without um, destroying them. So it's it's a non-destructive adjustments uh, that you can that you can use. Now, uh, also you can clip these layers, any layer, to another layer by holding down the Alt key on a Windows machine or uh, Option on a Mac, uh, right in between the two layers. If you hold that down and click, you'll notice that it is now clipped to the layer below it. Um, it's, right now it doesn't do any, uh, any difference, so you can't really see what's happening, but let's say, let's say I had a, a layer with some red on it, and I wanted to uh, do another layer with 
green on it, but I only wanted the green to be applied to the areas of red. I can clip the green to the red, and now it's it's doing essentially what you would expect. Um, really cool stuff. The entire method that we're going to be talking about here uses these clipping layers. Uh, you don't have to use them if you're only going to be using one color ramp, but since we're going to be using multiple um, to basically uh, redo the scene that you see here, uh, we're going to use clipping mass. So the first one is, is black and white. Next thing that we want to do is basically define how many colors we want in our color ramp. So we do that by laying down a posterize. Also clip that to the black and white. <clears throat> and right now it's set to four colors or four levels. Basically, this is just def uh, quantizing the, the range to however many levels that you choose. I want eight colors in my palette, so I'm going to hit eight here. Um, now, it's important to know that you're not actually defining, unlike uh, you know traditional uh, pixel art programs where you define the color indexes, we're not actually defining the actual colors yet. All we're doing here is defining how many colors we want. Um, so what comes next, obviously, is applying the colors to these indexes. You do that by laying down a, a gradient map um, adjustment layer. Now, I already have one set up that I used in my, in my last uh, image that you saw there for the sky. I'm going to reload that. Uh, but you can make these really easily. It, it basically, from dark to light, dark on the left, um, you can just lay down these colors, as many as you want, to kind of author your palette and you get a preview on the canvas how that's going to look. Um, so it's a, it's a very different way of defining uh, a color palette in that you're not defining individual colors, but, but rather ranges of colors. It's much more fluid and real. Um, so anyway, I'm going to cancel that. I don't want that color. I'm just going to pick this, this straight up sky. And now that's the basic setup. Uh, with this, we can already start painting um, with this uh, method. But one small thing to note is um, in order for this method to work, uh, if you want to color pick uh, colors from, from the canvas, you, you'll notice that we have a lot of uh, layers stacked up on top. Older versions of Photoshop doesn't allow uh, for you to color pick from um, from the current layer, I believe. I think it, it always does from the top. But in newer versions of Photoshop, you can go to your uh, color sampler tool, your eyedropper, and set the sample to current and below. This ensures that you're always going to be painting uh, in black and white, which is essential to the method. Um, so once you set that, now you can color pick colors from the canvas, and it will act as you would expect. Uh, and already, right out of the box, we can already use things like the soft brushes or gradient tools. Um, everything. But you'll notice that there's no uh, dither. So lastly, if you want to get dither, I made a special dither pattern. We're going to add a new layer right above the paint layer. And uh, go to our paint bucket tool. Go to pattern. And uh, I have a few of these dither patterns that I've made uh, as I was experimenting with different kinds, trying to perfect it. So I'm going to use my last one here, and I'm just going to fill that layer entirely with that pattern. Now, uh, obviously, this doesn't look like anything special. It's completely opaque. So you're just going to turn down the opacity until you get something that resembles the amount of dither that you'd like to use. So this looks pretty dang good um, to me. Maybe a little bit less, if you like less. And now when you paint on the paint layer, you're painting with dither patterns. And the way that it's um, doing this, this is what allows that behavior that I showed earlier, where when you're color sampling from the canvas, you're also color sampling the dither pattern, the dither amount, which is pretty neat. Now let's go back to my original demo painting over here because I want to show you the real cool stuff that this method can do that no other program can do, including the uh, programs that can do index painting. Uh, and this is all because that our source material is high definition. 
in this black and white high definition image. Um, because we have that extra detail there that is not seen, but it's still retained behind the behind the scenes and under the hood, uh, you can do some really interesting stuff. Like let's say we wanted to adjust the curves of the image uh, while maintaining our index palette. Typically in another pixel art program, uh, what that would end up doing is something along the lines of this, where you raise and lower that curves and you can see all the chunks uh, cycle through to the next index all at once. And it's kind of a chunky process and you're skipping indexes here and there. Um, it just doesn't look that organic or natural. Um, it's it, This is the problem with typical pixel art programs is, is that uh, once you lay down a pixel, it's flattened, it's done, it's destructive in nature. Um, but if you do uh, if you do it with our method and we put the curves adjustment uh, right above uh, the paint layer, you can do some interesting things. Watch as I raise and lower this curves adjustment, how the pixel chunks, they're still within the predefined index palette that I, I created, but this time you can see the chunks are following the data uh, in the source painting, that high resolution data. You can see it's organically re-indexing itself uh, according to the new values of what's below it. Super, super cool. Uh, likewise, this is what allows you to do things like uh, blend modes. Like if I wanted to use an overlay blend mode on this moon here, uh, let's use a darker blend mode. You can see that it it's bringing out detail that is simply not there. Uh, had you done this in a different pixel art program. Same with lightning, the image with the overlay. It brings back some of that that stuff that, that is still there underneath the scenes, but it's just not visible enough for it to be in the index version. So lastly, and one of the coolest things you can do is you're not even committed to the number of colors that you're using in an, in an image. Uh, typically, if you've like gone halfway through creating a pixel piece, like let's say these mountains here, and then I decided, you know what? I really didn't quite need that many colors. Um, like right now I have eight. I could probably get away with seven. Well, I can dynamically re-index the image to seven colors and I don't lose any detail because again, it's using this high resolution source data. Uh, granted, uh, some of the stuff that you thought were clean pixels before might not be clean anymore, and it will need a little bit of touch up, but most of the work is done for you. Uh, same with increasing the amount of colors. If I wanted to do uh, 12 colors instead of eight, I can do that. And again, I still have that data underneath there that I can still manipulate. So before we end the video, uh, I just wanted to show you how uh, this process looks in practice. Uh, so this is a piece that I'm working on. Uh, I've been working on it for a little bit. Uh, I don't have too much free time in my days, uh, and so it's been a little bit slow going. Uh, it's still a work in progress, but you can see uh, my layer setup here. Uh, the layer setup that I showed you before is just the basic setup. You can take this as far as you want and experiment with it and play with it and do different things with it. But the basic premise uh, is still the same. Uh, we still have that black and white adjustment layer. We still have the posterize and the, the gradient map. Uh, but everything above that and below that is kind of up for grabs. So I'll kind of step you through this uh, layer by layer. So I don't need that layer. <clears throat> so this is the, the underpainting of it all. Um, this is something that I purely sketched out very loosely um, just to get the composition right and the values right. Um, from there, what I did is I started adding layers in, on top of that. Um, so this is the little guy down there that is just still very loose, but I didn't want to commit to flattening him so I can still move him around. Um, on top of that, I have, this is where my actual pixel art detail is coming from. Uh, if you see it quantized, um, it ends up looking a lot closer to what you would expect in pixel art. On top of that, I have my dither layer. On top of that, I have paint 
layers that get applied after the dither. And uh, the reason being is I just didn't want them to have uh, just that, that grain to them. So I have, apparently there's nothing on that layer, but uh, I have various raindrop layers that I didn't want to have uh, dithering applied to them. And then I also have this rainy mist that gets overlaid uh, around his shoulders and head to kind of emulate uh, rain mist splattering on his shoulders. Anyway, so uh, once you index it and apply the colors to it, I also applied a couple of curves adjustment at the end to just fine tune that palette. This is where I'm at so far. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, that's all I've got for now. Uh, hopefully you, it will help you in your workflow like it has mine. Go ahead and follow me on Twitter at Dan Fessler or visit my website, danfessler.com. Thanks.